So let's go through some empirical statistics exercises using Excel as the worksheet country indicators 2019 if you're in my course you can get that from the blackboard site but it will also be uh, linked in the uh, notes uh, to this video and in there we will find a, a couple of interesting uh, variables uh, for for countries okay so it's not a complete list of countries it's actually more countries and territories because for some um, some of the countries or territories listed in that there may be sort of dispute whether it is a country or not i don't want to get into that so therefore i say these are countries and territories so the data we have here is uh whoops, land area okay how large is the country in terms of square kilometers what's the gdp per capita um and we also have the size of the population okay so first task using excel construct a new variable that describes the population density in people per square kilo kilometers so d basically is going to be whatever we have in the p column which is the population divided by l the land area and that is measured in kilometers squared so as a result we get um, people per square kilometer so we need in excel we need to basically implement this formula p divided by l to get this new variable d then we just want to find which are the five most or least densely populated countries in our list countries or territories please don't give me grief for this um, then we want to construct histograms okay remember what histograms are they're like uh, for d and gdp per capita so let's say if you have gdp gdp per capita here uh, we want to see there are possibly few countries for very low gdp per capita perhaps some more and then of course um, there will be very few very rich countries okay so we expect something like this uh, and then we also want to calculate some summary statistics mean median standard deviation and some percentiles so let's get cracking here is the spreadsheet okay so we're having uh, country country names and we have two and three digit uh, identifiers land area so that would be our l variable population and gdp per capita so the first task was to calculate uh, the population density population density so and that is well we'll take population and divide by the size there we go in afghanistan there are around 58 people per square kilometer on average of course that's an average across the country and there are some areas like kabul which will be much more densely populated but many most areas in afghanistan which are just very sparsely populated and you can see for instance do we have a kind here for instance 1920 so that's bahrain bahrain um, that's fairly densely populated almost 2000 people per square kilometer um, so that was our first task now we want to know which countries are the most or the least uh, densely populated countries so what we do is we need to sort we highlight all the columns you go to data sort uh, which variable do we want to sort by well population density from smallest to largest or large to smallest let's go smallest to largest so we can see the least populated country is mongolia uh, only two people per square kilometers on average that's pretty pretty few people so it's a huge country very large country but population is only a bit more than three million here okay other countries namibia australia iceland and libya are the other countries which make up the five least uh, populated countries 
So what about the um, most populated countries? We could either scroll down, let's just scroll down, or you could resort in a different order. So here we go, Singapore, Bahrain, Maldives, Malta, and Bangladesh. We already identified Bahrain earlier as a very highly populated country, but by a factor of four, even more densely populated is Singapore. Okay, so 8,000 people per square kilometer. That's just very, very densely populated. Of course, it has a fairly small land area, Singapore, and a lot of people for the size of that land area. All right, so that's the first couple of questions answered. Now we want a um, we want histograms for these two variables. So we th these are still ordered according to density. It doesn't really matter in which they they are ordered, although we'll see it matters in some sense. Check whether in your Excel, if you go to the data tab, if you have a little icon here called data analysis. Hang on, I need to move myself. So if you go to the data tab, if you see that little icon here, data analysis, right, that's what we're going to use. In case you don't see that data analysis add-in, please go to File, Options. You'll see something here called Excel Options. Go to Add-ins. And you can see that there's an um, add-in analysis tool pack. This is the one we uh, we will need. So to, to get that, you go to Excel add-ins here and go. And if you don't see that data analysis item, that box analysis tool pack will not have a tick. Then you give it, so it will look like this. Then you give it a tick and you say, OK. And then you should be able to see this data analysis add-in. So this is what we're going to use to create histograms. So let's create a histogram for GDP per capita. So how many observations have we got here? We have 183 observations, although you already see there are some missing ones. Uh, but let's be ignorant to that for a moment. So go to data analysis. You have a range of things you can do, for instance, also regression, which we'll do, use later. Uh, so histogram, you click OK. So there's a number of inputs needed. Um, let's just do GDP per capita. So we just highlight all GDP per capita. And uh, bin range, we're gonna leave empty for a while. Output range, um, you can either have it as a new worksheet. Uh, I like to have it in my worksheet. And now you can just click on a cell. So let's click on a, on a cell somewhere on top so somewhere here and so cell j3 for instance and it will just put results here and we want a chart output we want an image not only the data okay so let's click okay now you get an error message histogram input range contains non-numeric data well you can see here libya we don't have gdp per capita for instance okay so that's a problem for that function so how do we deal with this Perhaps let's just cancel this for a moment. The easiest way to deal with that is well, just reordering the data. Now, when you reorder data, you have to make sure that you reorder the entire data set. Okay, not only uh, not only a particular column, such that we are not mixing up the information. So we're highlighting everything. You go to sort, go to GDP per capita, click OK from smallest to largest, okay? So now you see, if you go to the bottom, the last observation which we have is in row 177. And then we have seven missing observations. So for instance, Palestine, that's one of these areas. Um, people from Israel would of course dispute that this is a country and from many other countries, Palestine is not a recognized country in most uh, countries, but it's clearly a recognized area, but we don't have GDP per capita data for Palestine. So, okay, let's calculate a histogram. So go back to data analysis, histogram, 
so it still remembers our data range, but we know we only want data to 177. I remembered where these are, but you could check back where the available data are. So F2 to F177 and the rest we leave. Okay, so now you see a histogram. So what do you see here? You see a table of information and then a graph representing this table. So what does that mean here? Bin 310, 341. So what you can see here is that there is one, actually that is an actual value of GDP per capita, okay, one here. And there's basically only one country which has GDP per capita smaller or equal to 310. Then the next sort of category boundary here is 14,581. And there are 119 countries which have observations between 310.34 or larger than 310.34 and smaller or equal to 14,581. We can just confirm that. We're just counting cells. So we want to get up to 14,581. So we'll find 14. 14, 5, 8, 1. So it's somewhere here. And perhaps you can see that little box right here or also down here. It says count. How many cells have we highlighted? 119. Okay, so that second boundary was not actually a uh, an actual observation. It was between two observations and there was 119. That's where these data come from. Excel, using some algorithm, Excel uses these boundaries. Whether they're useful or not is up for you to decide. I would say in this case, this is not very useful because we have almost all observations in this one category. So you can, however, determine also what the boundaries should be. So let's quickly, if you want to do that, you do it as follows. So let's create a few boundaries. So we have incomes are between uh, from 300 to I think the largest was what was the largest 185,000 that was Monaco yeah of course that's a very high income so let's see what should be our let's say zero 500 I'm just making this up now but what I think may be useful boundaries okay and you can try it yourself with different boundaries uh, let's use uh, actually from now on let's use 10,000 uh, so we are a little bit fine grained at the bottom let's do another 80,000 and then one category up to 200,000 we know that contains the highest one so let's say these should be our boundaries okay so go to data analysis histogram so now the data should be exactly the same but now the bin range, click on that little arrow, and now you can highlight what you want to be the bins. This one, and we click on that and we get back to the, uh, the scheme. Then where do we want the output? Let's say L21, let's just type that in, but you could also click on it, L21, chart output, okay. So here is our new histogram. So now you can see, that there are six countries which have GDP per capita between zero and 500. Let's just confirm that. Six countries which have GDP between zero and 500. So that's what this piece of information says. And then we have a graphical representation of that information. And you see, this is much more informative than the one we used before. So when you do histograms, you have to use a little bit of judgment what these categories should be. In this case, of course, you also need to recognize if you look at that graph, that these categories are not all of the same width. Okay, so the first one has 500, then 1500, 3000, 5000, and then everything is 10,000 up to the last category, which is 120,000. That's that last little bump here. Okay. All right, so what about histogram for population density? Let's create that underneath. So data analysis, histogram. Uh, now, okay, actually we already know, perhaps we can anticipate there will be a problem because there was certainly at least one country which had NA in uh, population 
density because we didn't have a land area, I think. So let's cancel again. And cancel here. And let's first reorder the data. Data sort. Uh, sort by now population density, or what I should say, let's say you write, before we do that, let's say you write a report or an assessment where you want to use a histogram. What you now do is you basically highlight this. And if you're using Word, what you can do is you can just press Control C, that's copy, go to Word and press Control V, and you have your histogram. Okay. Alternatively, in Windows, you can use something like Snip and uh, Snip and Sketch. Okay. So it's this sort of thing you can highlight. Basically, this histogram, and then save it as a as an image file. Okay, which I'm not going to do yet. And then you can import that image into Word. Both ways will work. So. Let's go back to our task of wanting to create a histogram for the population density. So what do we want? We want the population density. Let's see what happens if you highlight the whole column. Uh, bin range, we'll take that out. We'll first look at what the automatic version does and then we'll put that into, let's say, L50. Uh, and again, we get that error message histogram input range contains non numeric data. So we have to cancel here again. Cancel, we first have to rearrange our data, sort by population density. Uh, okay, so then let's have a look. It's only one missing, so we're going up to 183. So now we can go back histogram. So input range, it's let's go all the way to 183. Click on that little arrow, you go get back. Uh, bin range, we said we leave empty. So we'll just do this. Okay. Ah. I can highlight, can, can press Control X for Control Cut, and I'll move up and Control V. Here's the picture. Okay. Now you can see this was not a very useful picture because almost all countries are in one category where the density is between two and six hundred and twenty observations. Okay. And the reason why this happens is that. Um, Excel basically looks at the range of data, which goes from two to it was eight thousand, right, and sort of divides that up more or less equally. But that's not a good representation of the data here. We need m many more bins in these lower areas. So we will again have to think about what sort of bins do we want. Let's um, just do something. Let's we'll say we'll start with zero, uh, ten. 50, 100, 200, 400, 1,000 to 2,000. And then let's go to 10,000. We, we saw earlier there will be only very few countries in here. So let's do the same thing again. Data analysis, histogram. We still have the right data information bin range, we now want to be this one here. Um, output range, let's say L68. Could be anything there. Okay, where's our picture? Sometimes Excel puts pictures into crazy places. Here it is. And I don't know why it put that here. Let's just move that down. Okay, maybe that this is where actually the cursor was, or where we had a cell highlighted. Okay, so here we have this histogram. So you can see here the distribution. So we have fairly, you know, big number, fairly less 
densely or not very densely populated countries and then very few very densely populated countries. Okay, so that's how you create histograms. And the last task was to uh, calculate some summary statistics. So uh, one more trick, if you have so many data, sometimes it is useful to do the following, to sort of um, freeze certain columns and rows. Um, you see here's our country information and here's the title. So I'll put my cursor here and then you go to view and say freeze panes, freeze panes. And now you basically see that the first row always will have the headings and the first three columns, even if I move to the right, the first three columns will always stay there. Okay, so we can always see the country. So that's quite useful. So now we can go scroll to the bottom bottom here. And we want to calculate uh, mean, a standard deviation. Let's check what else uh, it was. Mean, median, standard deviation and 14th and 90th percentile. So um, P40 median and percentile 90. So we'll want that for these last two variables. So the mean, we use the average formula. Uh, and we know the data start in F2, sometimes easier to just type F2 to F184. Okay. So we have so the problem we've run into here again is that there's still NA values, okay? And the average formula doesn't like having an NA value. It says, oh, I don't know what to do with NA models, fix this problem. So there are two ways to deal with this. I will just copied that formula across to population density. So now we're calculating the average of population density. Um, now, there's a cheap cheat, okay? You just go, could, we just could go to Monaco and say, hey, NA, delete that value. So I just, you know, here's the formula, we'll just take it away, okay? And we know that for population density, that was the only value which was missing. And hey, here we have the average value, 208. There, so this can be cumbersome if there are lots of missing values. Now, of course, we could again just resort the data by GDP per capita, then we would have all the values with NA either the top or the bottom and we could all delete them easily. But I'll show you an alternative way. Okay. We can calculate as an alternative formula, which is called average if. And here we want to calculate the average of that whole column, but only if a certain condition is met. So the condition we have to enter is, well, don't be an A. Okay, and how you do that in Excel, you put something in uh, quotation marks, so that's the condition. And then basically, you type this, well, oh, not a question mark an A, but a uh, over dash and a basically exactly how this appears and that smaller or smaller and then e, uh, larger sign is Excel way of saying be not equal okay so smaller larger in Excel means not equal so press enter and that works as well okay uh, so two ways how you can deal with that so then we want the standard deviation standard def of the sample uh, let's not have sample data um, again from f to what well, to f 184 184 okay and we'll have the same problem and we copy that across because we eliminated the missing observation in the population density we don't have that problem so now i have to calculate several values every time we have this problem. So this is where I decide, okay, let's eliminate these NAs. So what I now do is I highlight this entire table again, go to data, sort, 
which sort by GDP, smallest to largest. All of the NA values are at the bottom. I highlight these NA values and I delete them. Okay, and everything works perfectly. So if the standard deviation, what about the percentile? We know we want to use the percentile inc function. Uh, again, F2 to F184. Oh, of course, we need to know which percentile, the 40th percentile. So that is comma 0.4. And here we go. Now we can uh, copy that formula and put it into this cell and perhaps also the next cell. Okay, so of course that's all the same because all these formulas are the same, but the median we know is the 50th percentile. You could also use the median function and then we want the 90th percentile, so we have to change that to 0.9. And then I highlight these three cells and just copy them across. You see, do we do the right thing? Yes, the right data range and uh, 50 or 0.5 for the median. Okay, here are our data. With that, we've done all our tasks and you have learned a little bit more practical Excel skills.